Hey, my name is Fritz. Who are you? Hey, come here. Okay, Michael. Hey, I'm Michael. I live in Berlin and I work as a mentor in Makerspaces to teach kids being creative with technology. And on this channel, I want to share with you my best workshop ideas. This video is the first video of a two-part series on how to create this awesome programmable robot called Fritz. I will talk about the programming part in the next video. In this video, I want to show you how to create the basic robot and how to make it controllable. As a bonus, you can make it solar powered, which I think is really cool. Then we have a look at creating the robot's body and those cute light up antennae. So you can start really basic and upgrade your robot step by step. And the basic robot will be our foundation for the programmable robot in the next video. There are print templates for everything you need. You can download them for free from our webpage. All my projects can be recreated just with paper and simple electronics. That makes all my projects perfect to recreate together with kids or with a group of kids. For the basic robot, you need two geared solar motors, two button cells, a binder clip, conductive tape, some kind of glue. I will use hot glue in this video because it is fast. Tape, scissors, a bottle cap and toothpicks. And you will need some old cardboard. You will find a link to all the materials and templates in the video description. So here is how the basic robot works. It has two motors that are powered by two button cells. This makes the robot move forward. The remote control creates two separate circuits that you can use to make the robot turn around. The solar version just uses another power supply. Usually motors are quite energy hungry and you can't power them with solar cells or button cells. So I use a special kind of motor, a geared solar motor. There are two kinds available, both are awesome. I will use the white one for this video. So let's get started. To start, cut out the chassis. Then fold over the edge where the batteries will go. Now glue it to thin cardboard and cut out the shape. Leave a gap where the motors will be glued to the cardboard. Fold the cardboard where marked. Next, trace the circuit shown in the template with conductive tape. If this is your first time working with conductive tape, I recommend my Paper Circuits Basics video. I link to it in the video description. Add some regular tape at the battery holder where marked. This is important to prevent the conductive tape from short-circuiting the battery where the black insulating ring separates the two poles of the battery. After tracing the circuit, prepare the motors and attach everything with glue. There should be a slight backwards angle in the chassis. Now attach the wires from the motors to the circuit with short strips of conductive tape. The two wires from the left motor go to the left tracks and the two wires from the right motor go to the right tracks. There are two sizes of wheels to choose from. Glue the template to a piece of cardboard and cut it out. Create a hole at the midpoint. To attach the wheels, the mounting brackets from the motor's manufacturer help a lot. But they have to be ordered separately, a link is in the video description. Alternatively, you can glue a toothpick into the hole and glue a small piece of cardboard on top. Make sure not to spill glue into the motor's bearing. Now you can attach the wheel with big drops of glue. To stabilize your robot, attach a bottle cap. This acts as a third wheel. If you use the big wheels, use a rolled up piece of cardboard to level it. Glue the robot's design template to the front and you're done. Attach two batteries to the circuit like that. Flatten the cardboard up front if your binder clip is too small. Now test your robot. If the robot runs in circles, you need to switch the polarity of the backward spinning motor by exchanging the attached wires. If the robot runs backwards, exchange the two wires of both motors. Now let's talk about speed. These motors are quite slow, but really strong, which is great because a slow robot is much better than a robot that is stuck because of a weak motor. However, you have some options to increase the speed of your robot. A little speed boost are the bigger wheels. If your wheels need more grip, 
Put a small layer of hot glue on the edge of the wheels. A bigger speed boost is the possibility to exchange the gears of the motors, thus changing the transmission. These gears have to be ordered separately, a link is in the video description. The gears come with instructions. There are three transmissions to choose from. In the end, you get a pretty fast robot. By the way, the alternative motor comes with extra gears out of the box and is easier to disassemble. Ah, one more tip. Those button cells exhaust after longer periods of driving, but often they are not empty. Give them a short rest and they should work again. I guess it's just a drop in voltage. So now let's get to the remote control. To keep things simple, it is a wired remote control. The controls are really simple. These two battery holders connect the plus poles to the top side and the minus poles to the bottom side. The top side has a small gap in its tracks and these foldover switches bridge that gap if you press them. If pressed, you close a circuit to one of the motors. By pressing both switches, you go forward. For the remote control, you need two additional button cells, another binder clip and flexible red and black wire. The remote control will take care of the power supply, so remove the batteries from the robot. The template has a bottom and a top side. I recommend to first trace the circuit with conductive tape. Again, add regular tape at the marked spots where the batteries will go. Fold the template at the dotted lines. Then glue the bottom side to some cardboard and cut out the shape. Proceed with the top side. Fold these parts around the edge. These will be our switches. This part is where the batteries will go. You need to fold it twice. Add some glue in between. Now prepare two black and two red wires of about one and a half meter length. Strip the wires at the end. Wire strippers help here. There are markings where to attach the wires with some conductive tape. Keep the two wires for each motor together. Now we have to prepare the robot. We want to control the motors separately, so we need to cut this track of the circuit. Now we can attach the wires to our circuit. The two wires from the left switch go to the tracks connecting the left motor. The two from the right go to the right. We connect the black wires where the minus pole used to be and the red wires where the plus pole used to be. Attach two batteries to each side of the remote. Now we have two separate circuits that control one motor each. Awesome! If you want, you can connect the two circuits together like that. This connects the two battery stacks together and gives the robot another speed boost. But be aware that you have to have all batteries connected the right way for this to work. If not, you will short circuit all four batteries. For the solar powered robot, you need a solar cell or if you can afford it, two of them. You can use this template or prepare your remote control like that. Cut and strip the wires. Then attach the black wire to the bottom and the red to the top side of the remote. To have some more power, you can use two of them. Connect both red wires to the top and both black wires to the bottom. Now go out and have some fun. If you want to create the robot's body, you can use the colored version or my colorless version that can be painted. Making the body is a straightforward process. It works like that. Score all edges with the round edge of a binder clip and a ruler. Cut out the shapes. Pre-fold every edge. Glue everything together in that order. Front and back. Then the top parts of each side. Then the lower parts. Done! A little trick I invented is to mount magnets onto the chassis and glue magnets to the flaps of the body. Let the magnets find its way. That way, the magnets will always hold the body in place. I love this little idea. Now let's light up some antennae. The light up antennae require two LEDs, a button cell and a binder clip. There's a template for it too. Cut it, trace the circuit and glue it together. Fold the battery holder and test the LEDs. The long legs have to point to the plus pole of the battery. I like to use colored paper for my antennae because it just looks so cool. 
If you do not have colored paper, you can use these colored rectangles in the print template. I use some vegetable oil to make my colored paper translucent. Then I roll up the small pieces of paper, put some glue on it and glue it around the LED. Of course you can just use the LEDs without the paper decoration. Attach the LEDs with some conductive tape. Now make a small cut at the top of your robot's body and put the LED holder inside the robot. Glue the little holding flaps to the body and attach a battery to the other end. Or you just attach it to the chassis of the robot. Now you have a controllable light up robot. So that's it. To get started, check all the links in the video description. In my next video, I will show you how to use your smartphone to turn this basic robot into a really extraordinary one that can be programmed in many, many ways. So if this is interesting to you, um, subscribe to my channel. And if you are an educator, please consider supporting me on Patreon, where I share even more helpful resources for teaching kids about technology using paper circuits. And if you want to be prepared for future projects, I recommend you have a look at my Vault Paper Scissors box. Uh, it's nothing that I'm selling, it's just a list of materials that I use and getting these will prepare you for all my future projects and also past projects. And all the materials are cheap and easy to use. Yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching and see you next time. See you next time.